Okay, I'll call this meeting of the July IMHS board meeting to order at 635. Um, start the meeting by reading the mission statement. IMHS serves animals and people by offering programs that promote animal health and responsible pet stewardship and foster compassion towards animals. So we'll start with a moment of silence for a kitten named Toledo who passed away this month from illness. have enough votes to pass the meeting minutes this week from last month, so those have been approved. Uh, business update, unfortunately on Sunday of this week, Mitch Sale resigned from the Board of Directors. His personal life is just too busy right now and he's working too many hours not able to uh, commit any time at the, right now. So I did accept his resignation on Sunday. Um, if anybody knows anybody, any other candidates to possibly fill this position, then uh, let's start talking to them. So keep that in mind. Um, I think that's it for the business update. Um, we have a guest speaker, Linda Craddock. Mm -hmm. You ready for me now? Sure. <laughs> oh. So I think Wendy sent a copy of this proposal. I have a few extras. Would anybody like? Yeah, I could have read it. Someplace I'm supposed to stand. Is there like Probably a place like, better? Like, <laughs> sit over here. like right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Not well, so I can see you. Hello. Uh, so I'm Dr. Linda Chasman, and a lot of you already know me as a volunteer. Linda Craddock is my married name, so some of you know me as Linda Craddock. My business name is Linda Chasman. So, um, and then I, of course I've been a volunteer with IMHS for about five years now. So. Um, mostly doing fostering of kittens. And what I'm bringing today is a proposal. Um, I'm also the owner of a counseling center, Animal Assisted Therapy Programs of Colorado. And it's a very novel, um, one of a kind counseling center in the nation, um, possibly internationally. We have a small ranch in Lakewood, and we have been um, sheltering animals, rehoming animals. Um, for the last year, we've been there since July. The business is two years old. So we have three horses. Thank you. We have three horses, two goats, uh, two feral cats that came from IMHS, um, two therapy rats, and various uh, sundry dogs, and also my therapy cat, which was also a kitten that I had fostered for IMHS. So. I've lost count, there's like 11 or 12, something like that, animals. And all of the animals have been trained, socialized, with the exception of the feral cats, um, to interact with our clients. So we see a lot of children, a lot of teenagers, we see a lot of trauma. Uh, we, saw, we see a lot of kids who have abuse issues. Um, it looks like we're going to be getting a contract from Boulder County to be seeing some of their kids, and we've got, we've got other, we see veterans, we have a contract to see, to treat homeless vets, and so all of the therapy is done with the animals, and so it's an amazingly effective approach to counseling. Bye, Lily. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we have grown tremendously. So the reason that I'm here today is that we started 
a branch of the program that we call TAILS, Therapeutic Animal Assisted Interventions for Life Success. And this is our pending nonprofit. We have filed um, paperwork with the um, IRS and we are already a charitable organization with the state of Colorado, but um, as of today, the IRS is processing October's applications, and we submitted ours in, I think, March. So it's going to be quite some time before we get approved as a nonprofit, and so that's why I'm here. Um, in doing some research, there's something called a fiscal sponsorship, and it's a fairly common arrangement whereas one organization asks another nonprofit to sponsor them. And so essentially what it would be would be that TAILS would be a program under IMHS. So all of the funding would be kept separate and um, there's some bookkeeping that needs to be done, but essentially we can operate as a nonprofit under your nonprofit until ours comes through. And so it's very legal, it's actually a very simple process and a lot of organizations do this instead of actually opening a nonprofit at all. So it's run separately. Um, there would be just somebody coordinating the books back and forth. Um, and I had you know, submitted uh, a sample contract and you know, we, would, we would pay whatever expenses with an attorney or whatever we needed. And so there could be some benefits for IMHS and I think that's with something, I mean, obviously the benefit would be to our organization to be able to kind of, you know, leap on your, your uh, nonprofit, um, but of course we want there to be a mutual benefit. So um, I had some ideas that I wrote in the proposal and, um, you know, and I'm open to any other ideas as well. So are you interested in me mentioning some of those ideas, how it could be beneficial to yes. IMHS? Yes, please. Okay. Um, well, we do have a, a similar mission, and, and I've cited that in the proposal. And all of the work that we do is, it does involve humane education with our animals. And so we also do get some clients who are there because of animal abuse issues um, and kids who have, you know, done some of that as part of their behavioral problems. And so we have some protocols, and we do this with all of our clients. And so before they even can see them, they have to sign a statement that basically says that all of our animals um, have equal rights to their time, their body, and if they want to participate, they can. If they don't want to participate, they don't have to. And so, you know, if the rats don't want to be held one day, then we put the rats away. Or if the cat, you know, wants to leave the room or go to sleep, we don't wake the cat up so that the client can hold them. And so. One of the things that we do very actively is model respect and stewardship for animals, which I know is a really important part of your mission. Um, and so we also have the capability, like we've done in the past, this last litter of kittens that I fostered went to work with me every day. And so our clients, kids, child, uh, children, teenagers, adults, all interacted with that litter on a daily basis. You know, they got the run of the house, there were dogs there, so they got socialized to dogs, people, people picking them up, snuggling them, and this is all done very supervised, so we teach them the proper way to handle animals. And so this is something that we could continue, continue on a more formalized basis. I mean, this was just done because I was fostering the kittens, and I thought it would be a really cool thing for the kittens and also for our clients to be able to work with these kittens and learn about gentleness and, you know, we, and empathy. It's just a big thing that we teach with our clients is empathy. And so that was just one one thing that has already happened. And so there is the opportunity to bring other animals to the agency. So if there are dogs that need socializing or cats, uh, we can have them. Some of our clients, as part of their counseling, they actually do training. So they clicker train our goats, for example. One of our horses is being clicker trained. And, um, and of course, the dogs can be clicker trained. So it's a skill that they're learning. So if you had a dog or an animal that needed some specific kind of behavioral interventions, um, we could perhaps have a client that would be you know, helping or a series of clients that could be helping to remedy that on a regular basis. Uh, and so you know, these animals are more visible. I think out of that, out of the last litter, only, I think they all got adopted actually by people from my agency. 
They did. They did. So, so yeah, they were client, all clients of, of mine, of the agencies, and then me I got all of those kittens adopted, the entire litter. Um, and so, you know, so that's always a possibility. I mean, there's about maybe 50 or so people that are in and out of our counseling center every week. And so whether they, you know, meet an animal or whether we have pictures of, you know, a special animal or, uh, you know, a notebook or something that has the adoptable animals, you know, we can be one more avenue to show these animals that really need homes. And then, you know, if we have the opportunity to bring them to the ranch, then we can, we can work with them even further. Yes? Can I ask how that's structured as far as interaction with animals that would be from Inner Mountain? Is there like direct supervision? There's always direct supervision, right. We never allow clients to participate, to, to engage with any animal unless there's a staff member or a volunteer around. And so that includes going in the back part where the horses and the goats are. So there's always a staff member or a volunteer. So we're always making sure that animal safety is one of, if not, you know, the important, more, it's equally important to our client safety. And so um, we're constantly on that and we're talking very actively about, you know, how do you pet this particular animal? What does this animal like? How can you tell that it likes this? You know, it's walking away from you. What do you do? You know, I mean, so we're really very actively engaging about the dynamic relationship that happens with animals. And, and that's what builds our therapy pro process, is them being able to build those relationships with the animals really helps our clients. I'm just curious, like on the dog, we do clicker training or whatever uh -huh. with some of your clients. Would they go back and forth each day, the dogs, or do you have places to um, keep them for a few days? Or uh, that that, we'd have to figure that out. Okay. I mean, there nobody lives at the ranch. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't be inclined to leave them overnight. So it would be where one of the staff members or one of the volunteers could possibly be, um, you know, okay to be fostering them. Okay. Um, or, you know, if they're here, maybe I could pick them up or something and drive them in on a daily basis. So, but they wouldn't be spending the night there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Is it possible to visit to see the place? Absolutely. Wendy was just there. I would love to have you come and visit. Okay, great. It's, yeah. We're just finishing up some construction to be handicap accessible. Um, so things are sort of, after today, they said they're going to be finished at least with part of it today or tomorrow. So, you know, if you come maybe next week or the week after, we should be looking pretty, pretty sharp. So. I'd like to go like in three weeks if you want to go then. I yeah, that's probably about Okay, good. So maybe then three weeks okay, or so. Sure. Okay, I may be on vacation that week, but or we'll, we could do it we'll, after. Well, yes, yeah, so I mean, we'll you, maybe Wendy time. can, you know, get get a couple dates together okay. at work and good. we can arrange that. Mm -hmm. It'll yeah, be fun. And I can put together some activities. So we do get a lot of groups. We get a lot of schools that come by and bring classes of special needs kids, and we don't charge anything for that. So this is. You know, we've been operating as a nonprofit for this year mm -hmm. uh, without getting any funding for it. So it's just been, um, you know, us trying to be serviceful and being out there and, and allowing people who don't always get to experience horses and goats mm -hmm. and rats, you know, <laughs> and um, being able to have that experience. So, you know, now we're just hoping to be able to get some grant money to actually pay for what we do. That would be really nice. Is there any financial gain for IMHS? There could be. As part of the um, fiscal sponsorship, we could agree that you would get a percentage of whatever money you take in for us. So the standard is between 5 and 10 percent. And with the participants, or the, or the people that are, you know, flowing through your customers, your clients. Okay. Um, do they sign a waiver, consent waiver, or something like that, just in case there were some kind of a, a problem? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, and that, that um, the sheet that I told you about, we talk about the risks of interacting with animals. I mean, the, we've got two miniature horses that they've stepped on my foot three times. So, you know, and the goat has bitten the child. And, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, these things happen when you have mm -hmm. those kind of animals. We've never had anything happen with the dogs or the cats. But, you know, these farm animals, you know, that can happen. Um, so we do have a, a liability form that says all the risks, and we also talk about in that same form that these are the rules when you, in, when you come here, 
these are our rules and um, okay. you know, we respect the animals. And the same if there's something like, let's just say kennel cough with a dog, if it hasn't exhibited itself yet, but you know, it, it turns out later that it has kennel cough and somebody brings it home to their dog, that would be covered by the liability? You know what, that's a really good question. We don't have them bring our their own dogs right. in, but you're talking about if an IMHS dog came in with kennel cough. And they were working with the dog, went home to their family, and their dog contracted kennel cough, something like I that. I would imagine that I would feel responsible for paying for the treatment of that, but um, I mean, I, I know our dogs are all vaccinated for that before they're allowed to work with us, so I mean, that may just be something that that maybe we agree that we do. We have to look into that. Too. Yeah, you know, okay. get them vaccinated because um, because there are a number of dogs there, and we don't we don't want that kind of transmission. And that's frankly why we stopped. We used to allow clients to bring their dogs there, and then a dog bit one of the goats. Mm -hmm. And so you know, we're this is a learning process for mm -hmm. us. Um, unfortunately, you know, like, know. like a lot just, of us, you know, yeah. bad things happen, and then you go, oh well, that wasn't such a good idea. So, um, but yeah, we don't. We're pretty careful about the animals that come on site because of those kinds well, of things. Well, we could establish our own protocol that, you know, we wouldn't want to send a dog out that we've only had at the shelter for three days. We'd probably want it there for a specific amount of time right. so we can see the behavior and make sure that they're Their not hard yeah. It's just there's always going to be something that you don't, I mean, there's always a risk. That's yeah. Right. right. Well, and, and, you know, I mean, we do have goats, and every dog wants to chase a goat. <laughs> and so, you know, that's one of the first things that we've had to do. We've had, I think, probably six different dogs that have worked at our agency so far, and each of the dogs has had to be trained not to chase the goats. And so, I mean, it's a really good thing for a dog to learn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as keeping our goats safe. So, I mean, but there are basic things like that that my assumption would be any new dog is going to want to chase the goats. Right. You know, and if they've never been around horses, you know, same kind of thing. There are always these kinds of dangers that have to be dealt with right up front. Do you have uh, any kind of time frame in mind of when you're looking to get this completed? No, uh, I mean, we, we would rather have it sooner than later. Um, obviously, we can't start applying for grants until we have, we have something in place like this. And uh, we, right, right now, we have some funding needs with finishing the handicap accessibility, for example. Um, and we would like to be able to solicit donations that could be um, tax deductible for the donors. So, um, you know, right now we're, we're trying to raise about another $10,000 to get that fixed. So that's kind of an immediate need. Uh, and, you know, beyond, beyond that, there's nothing immediate. We'll, you know, we will continue to go on as we have gone on for the last year, um, you know, our, us continuing to fund it out of our own, you know, our own pockets. But I think it would be, you know, the sooner we can start getting grants out there, then the sooner we can start getting funding. And, and I think, you know, there, an, an, an additional benefit may be some sort of collaboration with the two programs may also be beneficial in terms of getting grants for both of us. So there, you know, there, there may be some benefit to that for IMHS as well. Do you, is there any way to get a, a more definitive idea of the date of when your 501c3 is going to come through? Ellen has called and, I mean, we have, you know, we have the document that says we have your paperwork. And you know now, just wait. So there is absolutely no way to know. My concern, the reason I bring it up, is I'm thinking about there's you know there's a lot to go into putting this together, and mm -hmm. we're going to have to engage Marta, who is unfortunately not here for you to me, mm -hmm. and be and paying her. And what I would hate to see happen is we do all of this, and we're ready to sign the contract, and your status comes through, and go, oh, never mind. Right. Um, so that's yeah, one thing in my mind is some protection against. Yeah, and you're no, just looking for this to go until you get the the approval from the federal. You know that virus. that is kind of what we need now. There may be some benefits for us to continue. I mean, if, if we see that there are benefits to continue the collaboration, mm -hmm. we may still be able to do that without us necessarily needing to borrow your yeah, your nonprofit status anymore. Right. So okay. you know, if Tails becomes a project of IMHS, it could be that we still continue to foster dogs or you know do whatever we have been doing. Um, and just you know, remove that financial piece from the from the puzzle. Okay. And did you? I don't think the contract's in here, is it? 
Um, I included a copy of a contract in the email, so I can I can send it. Um, okay, you send it it's a separate attachment. I, think. I know, and I had did so much difficulty the last yeah. couple of days trying to print from Google. Yeah, it's a, P a PDF, and I can just send it again. And it's a California, but it's a, a California contract, but it's very standard. Okay, and it's you know it's really simple. The only the only challenge is just the bookkeeping. It's just keeping track of the money coming in, and and you know and basically that's it. So everything else. Would, we would be handling everything else. Okay, and yeah, I'll just, what I'll do is, I did get your email, or okay. Wendy's email, I'll forward it to another email versus Google, because maybe okay. that's my problem with my new computer, I don't know. Okay. But I'll figure out how to open that thing up. And what, I, I haven't read this, I just got this mm -hmm. week too, but what are you thinking on the bookkeeping? Is this something we would do, and then you're providing a reimbursement of sorts, or is this? Well, that would be what that financial uh, agreement is about. If you okay. wanted, you know, five or ten percent, that's something that we would negotiate, and then that, that would compensate you for the time that it would take for you to do those books. Okay. And you know, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, the clients pay fifteen, twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and and even that stuff we can put right in the bank. So this is we're only talking about donations, and grants. So, you know, we can take in the client money, you know, they pay $15 a session, we can deal with that. That's not the issue. It's just the other donations. So, we're not talking about a huge amount of money or money flooding in all the time, mm -hmm. although I would love that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's more, you know, if we get a grant six months from now, you know, we know we can, you know, put it in, you know, your organization and do it legally. And the same thing, we can solicit donations now and say this is tax deductible and all of that. So it's not, but it's okay. We don't would not need to do accounting for all of your, like you said, fifteen no. bucks a client that comes in or whatever. No. That's mm -hmm. because that's not tax deductible. Just the tax it's really the tax correct. deductible receipts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just those, those donations. How is that money dispersed to you? Yeah, we'd have to make some arrangements. So if it was your treasurer or, or whoever, or Marta, that was doing the bookkeeping, they might have signing authority on our, we have a separate tails um, checking account, so they could, you know, just deposit it directly into our account. And so, you know, we would just need to see, you know, what's coming in. We'd have to make some arrangement that it first comes to our address and then we forward it on or mm -hmm. something like that. So we're both you know, in good communication about what, what is there. What software do you use? Um, we just use Excel. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, you know, bookkeeping one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, basic, basic bookkeeping. It works. Yeah. <laughs> what about adoption fees? Are you paying the normal IMHS adoption fees, or is there some, mm -hmm. do we have some discount going with you already? Or? No, uh -uh. We've, we've already, you know, I've, I paid my adoption fees for Samantha, and the same thing with the um, clients that adopted. Um, that is something, you know, the filial pet therapy program is a unique program that we have where we help families to um, work with their own family pet in a therapeutic way, and so a lot of times that does involve adopting a new animal. And so the two kittens that went out were part of that filial pet therapy program, and so that was, you know, we worked really hands-on with them about how those kittens could help those children when they were feeling anxious and stressed and you know helping to, to calm anger and all that. But they did pay those fees. So um, you know another nice thing may be to be able to expand that so that we do pay the fees, that Tails does cover those fees as part of the filial pet therapy program. So because it does, you know, the, this population that we're talking about Paying ten or fifteen dollars a session can be a real burden, and mm -hmm. so to come up with a hundred dollars or you know two hundred dollar uh, adoption fee is really a lot for them. So if it's you know if that's something that we could provide for, uh, you know seeking funds for that too, I think that would be awesome. Anything else? So what is um. When do you leave town? So, uh, leaving on August third, I believe, and we'll be back about August fifteenth. And you guys can go. I mean, she can go without me because I won't be back till four. Okay, so, so Kathy, um, I could go with you before that if you wanted to see it before the third. Sure. Uh, and 
anyone else who wants to go, it's a really cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, I can put together, you know, if we have three or four people or more, I can put together you an activity with the horses and with the goats so you kind of get a sense about what the clients go through. So that's one of the things that we regularly do when we give tours with groups is, you know, so you kind of get a feel of what animal assisted therapy is all about and you get to, see, you know, see what the benefits are. So, you know, that's something that, that we'd be really happy to do, you know, if a few of you want to come or all of you want to come. Do you currently handle transportation of the IMHS animals then down in the facility? Or? Well, I, I, I always have, I mean, because they've been living with me. The, the only ones that we've been doing so far are just those kittens, and they were, you know, at my house until they got adopted, so. Yeah, but they drove down every day, so they all got really acclimated. Oh, from your to, house? To from, yeah, yeah, so they yeah. all are good in the car. So <laughs> you're, you're up the hill, though, so oh, yeah, you, I live you up wouldn't here. need to have to put out expenses for transportation. No, not necessarily. I mean, I, I live closer to Conifer, but it's not that big of a deal for me to be picking them up. And it's possible, you know, especially if they're cats, they could stay at my house. We do have a dog, but I think the dog is, you know, if fostering a dog would be a little more complicated in our home. But, I mean, those are things that I think we could, we could definitely work out. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you considering this. And, you know, I want it to be a mutual... A mutual benefit. So, if you know, if there's some way that you feel like this could help IMHS <coughs> and help us as well, that would be terrific. So, thank you for letting me come tonight. Good to see you everybody again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda is the shelter director report. Unfortunately, Marta is out sick today. Um, she sent her her report out. Um, I'll read a couple of highlights that she she gave us. Shelter statistics from June: we received 61 animals in and had 70 animals out. So one was a euthanasia. Or is that the it was a kitten that crashed, and it Big was, day. I think, euthanized okay. towards the very end. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, Brandy is working Mondays now to oversee operations while uh, Marta concentrates on development duties. So the kitten season appeal has resumed this week. Um, she's has two candidates for the shelter supervisor position that have submitted resumes in the last week, and one is going to plan a visit for an interview soon. Uh, let's see. She's working on the fall edition of the newsletter, and will submit a copy for us to review by August 6th. Fifteen new volunteers since the last meeting. Jeez. Anybody for the thrift store? Did she say? Um, she doesn't specify. We don't know how many are youth versus not youth. Okay. Yeah. So those are that's a summary of her report. You can see the full report in your email. She sent it out to everyone today. So we'll move on to the fundraising committee report. Cheryl. Yeah, we had two meetings since our last meeting, um, and we've made progress. And actually, one thing was Cheryl's agreed to be a co-chair on the fundraising committee because it's just a little too much with that and keeping up with the finances. Um, so we've had the two meetings. Uh, we've got a good nucleus group working. We've got the date planned. In fact, Cheryl drafted the flyers which are in the process of being printed out and, and uh, displayed around the community. Um, it's October 20th on a Saturday. And um, we are actually, Teresa, who's on the fundraising committee, and Steve and Wendy went and secured the location, the venue for us. It's going to be the ranch, which is down the hill a little bit. What we're trying to do is actually make this one a bigger, you know, income-producing, but also 
uh, trying to appeal to some people that are down the hill, but as well as people that are up here. Um, so we're going to have it at the ranch on Saturday afternoon, October 20th, and we are in the process now of collecting and trying to organize the documentation in order to go out and really collect the, um, uh, the auction items. We've got our next meeting scheduled for August 7th, Tuesday, August 7th. Tell me if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure that sounds right. Yeah, I think we should change to a Tuesday this next time. Did you talk about the band? No, I wasn't okay. <laughs> no don't confuse me anymore. Sorry. Uh, we even have the entertainment book, Kick to the Curb, will be at the <laughs> left and right minded people, I know, will be at the event. So um, they seem to be our, you know, resident band yeah. people, which is great. Um, they love us and we love them. So um, we've actually, you know, we've got the venue, we've got the date, and we've got the uh, the main book. So that's great. Now we just need to start, continue to collect, not start, but continue to collect the um, items. So and we're trying to escalate that. Huh? Right. And I was just going to say, on that note, on the collection note, one of the, one of the documents that we have printed out, so you guys can feel free to take copies. I think I made 100 copies of these. Um, it's a front and back. One side is the donation form, the benefits, and the other side is we actually have <coughs> documented sponsorship benefits tied into oh, yes. our auction program, um, advertising on the website, sure. thank you in the winter newsletter. Okay. So there's some actual bit benefits for our local businesses to donate to us and the levels of their donation as well um, and, and what they get for each level of donation. So we're hoping that this is really going to help draw in more um, donation items this year. Um, and help not only the community members that donate, but also help us with better stuff. Yeah, we're talking about putting together baskets of, uh, you know, of like kind things that might make it more interesting, um, and not so many small items. Where we're at on that, we've decided, she's not here today, Natalie, we are not going to try to um, have the sidewalk sale that only gathered about $200 last year. And we could use those resources more so helping out with the silent auction itself. Um, and we've kicked around some ideas. I think we're going to have a raffle of sorts. It's more really more door prizes, but maybe a dollar or two dollars a ticket. And some items that we receive that might be fifteen dollar, you know, um, the ranch gift certificate or something. We might use that for some of the door prizes. But again, still something that we can raise revenue on. And we think we'll probably make up more than the $200 through that. Um, we'd also like to try to advertise membership at the door as well. So um, and we might do something where we couple some free tickets associated with, you know, two free door prize tickets, you know, if they join right then and there for the membership. So we're trying to make this informative, more informative than what it's been, you know, maybe in the past, um, and trying to appeal to where's the sweet spot, you know, where. What kind of things can we auction off and make it worth our while? And I don't think, is the space large enough? I always thought it was large Yeah. Enough. It's large enough for one auction. We don't have to do two or three ways. Watch. It's larger than what we had last year. Okay. And it's larger than my basement, right? It is much larger Good, than Good, thanks. Your <laughs> I can't scratch my head when she said that. So we've. Um, we figured it was such a quick response that you guys must have walked in and said, cool, let's work. Well, yeah. not only that, but Cindy is literally the most agreeable person I have wow. ever worked with. She's the owner of the ranch or the manager of the ranch. Right. And so she's pretty much already at Great Dane status. I'm already promoting both her and yeah. to the curb on all of our documentation and everything that we send out to post. And yeah. we should get her information to put up on our website as soon as oh, possible. Oh, Steve so. took a business card. Tracy, right? Oh, oh Teresa took the business card. Okay. okay, and she's going to scan it because... Cindy is um, technologically challenged and does not have the it's logo, fun. so Teresa's going to scan it cool. and try to do something with it. You like that? I like that. The, the, the um, I have a question. Uh -huh. Is this just for sponsoring this event? This is not tied to donations, or is it tied it's to donation. in-kind donations it's as both. well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, sponsorship, and I mean, if you donate, you're sponsoring, so okay. um, the, the idea is that you know, JJ donates 50 bucks to us, then we'll give him whatever the $50 mark is. And, okay. Know, so, uh, donations as well as, as straight up. Bomb.com is $500. Yeah. They're going to be out of all over our image. Tweeting for already has a case of wine for you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's for you, but. I know, I've already said. I know where it's give going. Give us the wine and we'll give it to here. Okay. Yeah, like, I mean, like we said, we really, you know, it, 
you have something tangible to bring to businesses now. So anybody that's working on trying to get donations and sponsorships, you can say, look at what you're going to get in exchange. Well, as I'm giving out my posters this week that I brought one for you guys to hang oh, up wow, at the good. shelter, um, I will hand those out that's everywhere the, I go. Um, and I'll send you... Yes. Up. Good. Um, I'll send you to... Um, I'll get your email again. I'll be electronic versions. Excellent. Thank so you. So that way you can do Post what them. you need to do with them. So if there's any, I think most of us here are on the committee, but for those of you that aren't, feel free to start <laughs> trying to collect the items. <laughs> Matt's like, yeah, right, okay. Oh, he got a lot of I know, he did. He got the spider <laughs> equipment that, or the um, uh, apparel that was good. But um, anyway, so that's, I think, our status update. Made some progress this time. Can you think of anything else? That's about it for now. Okay, operations report, Dave. Um, not anything new, really, except for Mitch leaving, but that has been that way for a while, as we all know. Um, Kathy and I haven't been able to get into the uh, surgical suite for a couple of weeks. That's temporary. I want to make sure everybody understands that. It's just circumstances rather than <laughs> tragic like that. Um, we all know about the kittens that got sick. Um, I think my opinion is I haven't joined in on the discussion much. I haven't been doing the emails lately. <clears throat> but I think it was a, a pretty generous discount mm -hmm. that um, Aspen Creek Veterinary Hospital gave us. So we owe them a, a big thanks. I know Marta did send out a thank you right away when I showed her the invoice. Um, Gretchen, uh, I don't know if you all know who Gretchen is. Is an old dog that's down there that has some problems. I'm not sure which way to go with Gretchen. Uh, she's old. She's got uh, dental disease. She has some large tumors that need to come off. Um, No, she's got another one on her body as well. Yeah. But anyway, um, she she needs some help, so we're working on that. Um, I told her I would just adopt her out. <laughs> yeah, I tried today. Yeah, yeah. So she asked me about that. If if she, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to. Uh, a doctor out with a medical waiver, and I see nothing wrong with that. But the dog has some health problems, is, is the point that uh, I feel we're responsible for. So we're working on it. Um, anything else, Kathy? Not really, just continuing to research equipment costs. So that'll take a while. How much of that can we do? As far as equipment, uh, uh, Gretchen. Oh, Gretchen. Gretchen. Well, I, I certainly could do the surgery, but the, the and we've done blood work. Blood work has come back um, very good. Um, mm -hmm. So um, the main thing at the moment is uh, chest films and uh, the dentistry. Now, again, we anticipate getting dental stuff on down the road, but that hasn't been help Gretchen mm -hmm. out. So. Although she has a canine that's definitely going to have to come out because um, it's down at the pulp. But mm. if we can get a couple of elevators, I think we can probably do a decent cleanup on her too. And the surgery suite being about a scale. So. Yeah, that one tooth is the biggest problem. Mm. Mm. How do you guys feel about playing pet food for dentists like that? I know they're kind I, of not higher paced. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. Because she's somebody or a dog that I'd want to put on IVs. She'd be a monitor her higher risk, risk right? Personally, I just hard. Think that we should do all we can for her, as long as it doesn't run us too far. Yeah, and uh, I think we're you know after the the kitten uh, um, experience that we all went through. I think, you know, with the discussion that we've had, we're all on the same page there, mm -hmm. and I think that Gretchen is covered under that. Yeah. 
So um, I think it's just a matter of uh, continuing to work on it and you know, getting it done. Yeah, it might make her a little more adaptable if the yeah. work is already done. How old is she? I'm guessing her at about 10 years old. But, yeah, um, again, I'm trying to, with the unexpected expense that we went through with the emergency on the kidney and stuff, trying to be real careful with the money, but we may have to spend about a hundred bucks to get some chest notes done as well as it's looking like at the moment. I'm still working on it, so. Really, according to our policy, um, we need to send it out if it's over two hundred dollars, or if it's going to cause a huge effect to the um, the budget. Whereas, like, if you looked at how much it would have cost per kitten for treatment, it probably wasn't two hundred dollars per kitten. But all of them all together at once, we needed to make sure to get the information out because it definitely affected the budget a little bit. But yeah. the hundred dollar X rays, um, you don't need to get approval or anything for that. Okay. Um, so that's the biggest thing with the operations committee is the unexpected expense on top of not getting into the surgery room and saving the shelter money, having to send down the spades and meters to spade a day. But that's only temporary. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Marta might be able to get it. We posted something about Gretchen. Yeah, a little target donate. fundraiser. Yeah, donate like Kathy some, said, she yeah. just work her magic. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. she could do it. I would definitely do Um, as far as the surgical suite goes, uh, you know, we appreciate the help that uh, Mitch was able to give us and miss him. Um, but it, the veterinarians aren't a problem. I've got several vets that have offered to, to fill in, it's the support staff that is the trouble. So if you know any uh, certified vet techs or, or uh, vet assistants with experience with anesthesia and surgery, send them our way, because that's where the, the stumbling block is. Hey, Kathy, is Andrea, does she qualify for that? Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, she would. Okay. If if there's somebody who's interested but doesn't have the qualifications, are you willing to work with them a little bit? Well, we've got several people that will, uh, Marta has sent our way that we're, we're training so that they can get experience uh, and put on their resumes for vet school and, and just because they're interested and so forth. But it takes a long time before someone is um, reliable as far as a uh, anesthesia, anesthetist. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, it really, yeah, it'd be better if it was someone that was actually a tech that has gone to. Yeah. You pretty much need somebody school. who's you already just, trained. You can't, yeah. Especially where anesthesia is involved, you just cannot teach that. So, adequately, hmm. so. so, Steve, several people that have uh, volunteered to help, and we can use them to uh, sweep when we're when we're finished for the day. To scrub instruments and uh, do gopher stuff uh, to get towels and, and animal, you know, that kind of stuff. But the, the nitty gritty and the, and the, the bottleneck is with uh, a qualified technician. To okay. Anything else? So that's it for the operations. All right, tech report, Steve. Uh, I guess the only news is we actually have all the computers working again. Um, Ken took care of sending off the new computer that was not working correctly and got a replacement and everything's back to normal. I haven't heard of any issues, so I'm in good shape. I have a question. Maybe it's not for the tech committee, but it might be. Um, when I was at the Bailey Day, with the IM, with IMHS table, somebody from down the hill was always oh, talking to me. He's very interested in donating. He works with web pages and whatever, and he wants to donate his time. He works from home, and asked if we had any needs for something like that. I know we have people 
the Knights and whom, you know, a couple of other people, are those people doing it, um, it for free or do we pay them something? I mean, is there a... The only web work we're having done right them? now outside, well, the only web, web work we're having done is by Amy Glickson, who's a volunteer, and she's <coughs> taking care of all of our web work. Um, I don't know if she would actually want someone else to help or if that would cause too much confusion. But um, if you have his name and you want to pass it along to me, okay, I will get it with Amy. And because um, yeah, I may be saying the wrong them. thing, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, maybe but something that, else he can that do. That might be if she's willing to have the help. It might be helpful to have someone just focus on the sponsorship stuff. Yes. Because that has potential to take up a lot of time. And, and rather than have it all on one person, right. if, if it might be split, it, that might be helpful. Yeah, the, and, and I'll leave that. You know, Amy does such a fantastic job. I'll leave it up to her to make a decision if she wants help or not. Um, the big thing being you have to, like, coordinate if Amy changes something and somebody else changes something, and they both Two upload it. Versions. Yeah, that sort of thing. So, okay. But, yeah, pass me along. Yeah, let me find it. I totally forgot about it until right now. Uh, grant report, have nothing <clears throat> new to report. Uh, Sunday morning, I'm going to be spending a couple hours with Marta talking about some program ideas for grant requests, and Scott's going to be there too to give me some tips on grant writing. Great. So, uh, oh, very good. So, hopefully, um, there's a deadline for the Ann Shoots Foundation coming up. Uh, August 1st, so hopefully we can maybe put something together for them. They're, they're tight. They're, they have a letter on their website saying money's tight right now, so you better, mm. it better be good. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully we can come, come up with something good. Um, otherwise, I'm sure we'll get some other grants out here shortly. I was just thinking related to grants, if we do end up working with TAILS, um, we might be able to apply for other grants being that we're linked to a human services program because I know that just doing the animal a lot of times we have to um, designate ourselves as like community mm -hmm. um, it seems like there's a lot more human services opportunities out there um, but to where as long as they don't give the money specifically for that program we might be able to benefit right. a little bit by just having a program that we're doing someone's doing humane ed and human services for us. Yeah. Let's All right. We're ready for the big show, the finance report. All righty. Uh, June 27th, process payroll, 29th, paid bills, 30th, reconciled the restrict checking, restricted savings, and raffle savings accounts. We did get credits <coughs> back for those fraudulent charges we had been talking about. Um, and they appear to have stopped, so hopefully we'll have no more issues with that. Yeah, I went through the 2011 financial statement compilation from the CPA and provided a rent breakdown and asked about disclosing our bylaws changes. Um, she needed the rent between the shelter and the thrift store broken down. And next year on the 990, we will disclose the bylaws changes, and then that's the extent of um, disclosure we need for that. Uh, completed a transfer of funds in the PayPal and reconciled that account. Oh, twice apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Processed the June 941 to withdraw on July 13th. Updated the restricted funds worksheet and completed the transfer of funds. What we had as of the end of the month was 4639.14 left, and those were split out between the spay neuter, stop program, foster program, and special needs program. And then we have 2610357 in the shelter capital account. Uh, July 5th, prepared and mailed the second quarter 941 report, processed the second quarter state withholding to withdraw on July 13th, completed second quarter state and employment insurance report online, processed and paid second quarter state sales tax report, and reconciled petty cash. On the 12th, we had our uh, finance committee meeting. Um, there's a couple of things that we need some discussion on here. Um, the first of that is the misplaced slash missing thrift store money from May. Hopefully you guys all recall that. Uh, there were two envelopes that were picked up from the thrift store, potentially seen laying on a counter in the back, and are just gone. So 
Deb was able to narrow down what was cash and checks, right. and it is a total of 144.24. We recorded it as a loss of funds on May 18, but we wanted to talk quickly about if the board feels we need to do something in addition to that perhaps pass the hat or something like that to cover the loss. Um, we put in additional controls right away as mm -hmm. soon as that was discovered. Have not had any problems since then. It's my opinion that we took responsibility, made sure this didn't happen again. It's not an ongoing problem. I don't feel like anyone should have to cover the loss, but I want to get everyone's input on how you guys view that. I know Deb <laughs> has, you know, the well, and I guess my responsibility. But. Yeah, and the money didn't make it to me, but that doesn't really matter. It was looking back at the internal controls. What we did was we've introduced now, and it was talking with Marta um, and myself and going through what could we do to improve it. Now we have a log up in the thrift store where the person who goes up, and we're trying to limit it to only being the three uh, employees that, you know, when they're working that day, they go up and they get more timely every day they pick it up um, if possible and they get it in the morning they sign for it so that we know for sure because there was some question about whether it had been picked up or not from the thrift store but various people in the thrift store remember somebody coming up and picking it up so we do have that plus it's going to be done more timely so it's not sometimes they do four or five days in a row i see it two days later it's a week later you know that was part of what you know the time delay um, that that caused everybody's memory to kind of go bad so uh, i don't think you know, I don't feel responsible for it per se, but I think where I'm coming out is I want, because I did tell the people at the thrift store that not to worry, it's going to be, first of all, their revenue is still there. It's mm -hmm. going against another expense. But I wanted to make sure that the money was, you know, was going to be covered somehow. I'm willing to pay the full amount, and I don't have a problem with that at all, just so that we have the revenue. We don't lose the revenue. What the sticking point, I think, is whether or not there's any responsibility felt by the board. And because I think it's me making it up, that doesn't mean there's responsibility by the board. I don't want to set a precedent for that. That's where I'm kind of walking a tightrope. Right. And, I mean, we don't even have to make it that. I can just make a $145 donation that that. Um, but I do see, you know, I don't want to make this into any time there's a penny that's lost, with, you know, the board has to be responsible for it. I think that's a bad precedent. Uh, and like Wendy said, we did identify very quickly how could we further strengthen those controls, um, and we have not had a repeat whatsoever since those two days back in April. So what do you guys think about that? If Personally, anything. I don't think that you should be pitching in. I mean, we've put in controls. It hasn't happened again. I don't think you should personally take responsibility for it. That's my feeling on it, too. And what I can do is just make sure that I'm making donations. You know, it won't be that. I'm just, and you know, I think it'll stamp some of the stamps the other day. So right. I'll be covering it there. If, if we were negligent yeah. in any fashion, I think this would be a different conversation. But I don't think that's the case. Okay. And as long as everyone is aware of what's going on and in agreement. And yeah. should Right. That was, yeah, what I thought. Yeah, I don't want to make it this, you know, something where the board is, it, it is setting a precedent. That's my one concern. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, the second item that we talked about, uh, we are working to liquidate all of our stocks over the next several months um, to come into compliance with our investment policy. Our goal is to be fully compliant by the end of the year. Um, I don't think we'll have any problem meeting that. Um, what we had decided to do is to open a high yield savings account with American Express and we're looking at a few other places as well at 0.85% uh, and it's FDIC insured as per the policy <coughs> and we've made sure Matt and Cheryl are okay as being um, signers. Um, I don't want to be a signer on this account, I want other people to be involved in that and then Steve with us being married, it's better to just have two people completely unrelated involved uh, because this will be the money that we may potentially need to access if 
we run short one month or something like that, that would be something that we really need to make sure everybody knows what's going on with that. Um, and then the shelter capital funds that we've had in the restricted savings account, we've agreed to move to a one-year CD that's FDIC insured with a yield of over 1%. I found the bank that I wanted to open the account with yesterday, <laughs> found that they only do personal accounts, unfortunately, they have the best rates. So I'm in the middle of trying to find one of these places that will open a business account that will meet our criteria of what we want to make. Um, and what we discussed on the shelter capital funds is that we certainly won't need it within the next year. And if something wonderful happens and we do need it, we'll just take the hit. <laughs> um, Before you move on sure. from that, um, I just wanted the Exxon stock did. Oh, it, it should have anyways. It's in here. Oh, okay. Um, I've, I've got it. Okay. That wasn't on this day that that happened, so we'll get there. Um, so we have a couple of proposals that we talked about um, to try to deal with some of the uh, emergency treatments. So this won't be, it was the first time that something like this happened, but I imagine it won't be the last. So we kind of wanted to figure out how to better plan for things like this. Um, but first we need to determine who's going to be responsible for notifying everyone what's going on. And I'm thinking it's Marta. I would um, think so. She's the one that kind of has a finger on everything that's going on. Um, so what we'll ask her to do, as long as everyone's in agreement, is notify the entire board within 24 hours of the occurrence and then follow up with us with the estimated or actual costs as soon as she can. And that'll give us the opportunity to um, decide if we need to make adjustments to operations or if we can do some special fundraising. Um, we got really lucky this time, like Dave said, um, Aspen Creek gave us a, an amazing discount. Um, but you know, if we have several litters get sick in the coming months, and we had a lot of little sickly litters last year that we did what we could to treat in-house, um, but there's potential for a higher costs in dealing with this. So obviously we can't get this out for approval because these animals will likely go in after hours or whatever and already be seen and the expenses will already be incurred. So we just wanna make sure that the information gets out in a timely manner so then we can decide, well, can we have Marta to put this on Pine Camera 285 fam and try to make up some of these funds? Um, is it so, so bad that we need to limit intake for a month? I mean, you just never know what can happen with that. I don't foresee anything like that, but just in case, just so we can be able to talk about the options. And then for next year, I'll add a thousand dollars to the budget for April through December. It seems like that's when we're getting in quite a few kittens from DMAS, um, just to kind of have a little more cushion for us to work with. You know, like I said, this was an expense that we really didn't have last year, so we didn't know to plan ahead for it. Um, so we'll just do what we can to be a little more prepared next year, and then. Uh, the other idea was to develop a long-term giving slash fundraising program to solicit restricted funds specifically for emergency treatments. So it would be kind of like our, you know, the restricted funds that I keep on the, the cats and the spay neuter and the stop. If we get people giving to that regularly and we've got a nice balance in there, you guys will probably like the emails much better when they come out mm -hmm. and say, hey, we incurred $1,500 of emergency expenses this month and I just took it out of our little slush fund. Um, so that's another thing that I'll get with Marta about kind of adding that to um, one of our fundraising and uh, solicitation programs. Not really a slush fund. No, no, right. a designated fund. Restricted Thanks. fund. <laughs> Did you have questions or is everyone kind of okay with some of those ideas that we had to keep the information flowing and try to stay on top of it? Yeah, yeah I think if we can come up with a, this is our program or our these are our guidelines for emergency treatments. We can try and get some grants for that. Too. Oh, yeah. Good point. yeah. I, mean, I know there are grants out there for animal abuse and stuff like that, which we don't seem to have very many cases of, mm -hmm. of treating that, fortunately. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, and some of those are a, <clears throat> as long as you apply for the grant within six months of having given the treatment for 
this abuse, oh, right. um, then you can possibly get reimbursed for it. But uh, that being the case, I'm sure there's there's probably grants out there for for this type of thing. Yeah, too. and if we make it a, a a regular part of our literature, that mm -hmm. can just be sent to the yeah. grant foundations and whatnot. I'll we talk, might. I'll talk to Martin about that on Sunday too. Okay. Okay. Put you, that on the list. You might just want to make a note that once we, when we fill the open position, if Marty can't be reached within four hours or something. Okay. Because if she's off on a trip or something, you know. It has to be whoever's going to be there. Right. Okay. <coughs> and I'll um, go over all this with her once she's feeling better. Okay. Um, so moving on, July 13th, process payroll paid bills, reconciled the Oppenheimer and American Funds accounts, and completed the May 2012 adoption income audit, and all income is accounted for. On July 16th, the Exxon Mobil stock sold at $85 a share. Um, we had decided to put in that sell order to while it was still up there, hovering towards the high. The 52-week low was 67.03. The 52-week high was 87.94. So I think we got a, a pretty good price for our shares. Um, paid bills completed the PCI <coughs> compliance validation, which, as a side note. I really should not do that next time. Do you, are you or Steve familiar with what all that is, PCI compliance? I, I know the term PCI compliance, yeah. I answered yes to everything. I have no idea what I said we were just doing, but we had to get validated, otherwise we're getting charged $25 a month from our credit card processor. I have no idea really what I told them that we are and are not doing. So. Um, what is it? PCI, it's all the um, PCI stuff is related to the credit card processing. I want you to want to make sure you have controls in place. Protecting, Protecting um, so it, customer it, information, credit right, card so information. It'd be, yeah, so it would be like not having people's credit card records on file um, or stored anywhere in our data. I didn't understand an awful lot of terminology that they used. Okay. I don't that's think a, that we're doing industry. anything wrong, and that's about all I was going off. Okay. Um, we probably should review it if you have the questionnaire. If you still have that, we should probably, or I should probably go through it again. Okay. I do have some I can give you the link. Yeah. And if you need to do the process, I can, I'm going to cover that in my documentation, but that may be a couple, three months from now. But yeah, it's not so much the that, okay. okay. And I'll probably have questions for several people and stuff like that. Okay. Like, and there is a policy that I think the tech committee was supposed to work on. Um, of the handling, it was a question they asked me, and I remembered it was something that you had talked about. Um, the data security or something? Something like, like that. that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, just send that to me. Okay. Okay, uh, so I posted the adjusting journal entries for the non monetary, April non monetary donations. Um, I don't know, I'm sorry, that was the May. No, I apparently just have not changed that month. <laughs> That's June, sorry. Uh, completed the June 2012 adoption income audit and all that income was accounted for as well. Prepared, reviewed, and emailed thrift store financials and posted the financials via Google Docs. Going through our P&O, the membership and donation income is considerably lower than projected, um, over $4,000 lower. The sales, including thrift store and fundraising, were right on budget. Shelter program fees and vet service program income was higher by almost $3,000. They're just processing a ton of animals. Mm -hmm. um, investments did unfortunately take a loss in, it lost in the second quarter. I had not received the fidelity statement still when I did all this, um, so not sure you know, what we'll see from that. It was a couple of hundred dollars between our other investments, so it could be a higher loss after I get fidelity. Um, the supplies and materials are the non-monetary things that don't affect the budget, but just so you guys know, the value of what was donated last month was a little over $1,100. And overall, we had $1,347.08 less income than we expected. Our expenses, the vet service program was over for the first time by $26.55.24. When I looked to see what that was, we just had a lot of stuff that got over this month. It was not any one thing. It was, um, you know, we had a lot of vaccines, medications, microchips, um, some supplies for the suite, some different snap tests. It looks like Parvo snap tests 
came in. So it's just um, the timing of the ordering. I think you know every other month we've been under in the vet uh, service program as far as expenses, and it just happened that a lot of things got ordered at the same time. Is, I don't know if it makes a difference in the end, but is is the order? I'm assuming it's for several months worth of stuff, like on microchips and. Um, well, well, probably medications in particular like and supplies, you know, it'll probably last um, the shelter a couple of months, so which is why you don't see the same that. amount every month. Right, so I'm just, I'm wondering if it, an order like that should be prorated across the amount of months or something like that. Or, it, I know, it I know is, ultimately, it's prorated in the budget, and uh, that's why you're going to see us coming under okay. the budget amount some months and over other months, but when we're looking at the average, um, May, or sorry, January through May, this account has come in under budget okay. and substantially every other month. So I understand that. I'm just yeah, and that's that's exactly why it is actual like that. Yeah, it's it, there's just no way to know exactly when certain things are going to run out and we're going to have to order them. So. Okay. Um, animal services was over by ninety five seventy seven, um, and actually that's very close to the budget considering we had. Uh, 590 paid display today last month. So really, I know it looks like we're over, but it's really not that bad in the scheme of things. Um, fundraising, including the thrift store, are about 266 under budget. Uh, GNA newsletter, shelter and staff expenses, 300 under. Um, and that's rent, utilities, things like that. Payroll was right on budget. <coughs> Mileage was over by 136.84, and that was due to actually using people to mm -hmm. volunteers. And, and it's um, Sloan that as well. Um, when oh, when okay. they can't get volunteers, that's what they had Sloan do. Oh, so um, supplies and materials again don't affect the budget, but it comes out as an expense that month. So overall, we are over budget by 2075.95 um, for the whole month. Uh, we budgeted 387890 loss. Our actual loss was 730193. So we're off by quite a bit. Um, but a lot of that really, I think, is the time that Marta is not being able to spend on soliciting donations. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way things are right now. Um, that, that service, again, like you said, that's a more yeah, than one month. Yeah, and the next of the couple expenses. of months, it's going to be right. under again. So. And then let me look, I had a few extra notes. Um, Deb and I have not made a ton of progress on putting policies and procedures for the financials in writing. There's several that we need to deal with. Um, we agreed that our goal for that is to have them done by the year end. Um, we're just kind of swamped with everything right now. Uh, talked about the Exxon. Oh, and then the only other thing was the reimbursement policy that I sent out. Um, it was really specifically so we had the mileage reimbursement put in place, but when I had researched other reimbursement policies, they included all those other things, and I just thought, well, might as well just get what we can all taken care of in the one policy. So when you guys have a chance to read that and take a look at everything, um, if we can get that passed, it would be good. And sorry for the landscape reports. I just wasn't paying attention when I printed. So, do you guys have any questions on any of the numbers or anything? Checking um, it's a little bit lower. We've been running steadily at over fifteen thousand in the checking account. Um, well, normally we would have probably moved that to a savings or something, but we're using the savings as a restricted account right now. So once we get the restricted funds put into one of these higher yield accounts, we can actually use the savings to kind of move things back and forth and we don't need sure quite savings. so much. Yeah, sitting Two in the checking out, account. Two months um, th These are, these months right in here are the ones that we are scheduled for losses more than other months. So. I'm not as worried. I'd rather have that money there because I think we're probably going to need it. And we just paid. I think we're down to sixteen thousand right now mm -hmm. instead of the twenty-five. We paid the auditor. Um, there was another big one I saw going through. Yeah, we had two that were just large not, expenses. Yeah. 
our so, monthly, our quarterly. Just to give you guys a heads up, July is looking about the same. We had a couple of larger expenses, and the donations are down. So we're just going to have to kind of expect that July is going to look about the same. Mm -hmm. It'll get better. Well, and July is going to look really bad because unless somebody does bookkeeping, they'll be gone until early August. So I've got us up through Wednesday, yesterday. Oh, okay. So just FYI, we'll be missing 12 days or so. Well, everything <laughs> gets put in based on the date it was received. You're right, but I won't so, be back in town. I won't be able to start that till Sunday the 5th. So just yeah, that's okay. Be it'll be it'll okay. be taken care of by the next board meeting. Okay. So yeah, we'll have everything actually. Good input by then. Do you have any questions or concerns? Is everybody awake? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Got the driest report on that. <laughs> All right, I don't think we had any open business, although I meant to mention that in the business update is we did our insurance has been binded for the year, although apparently we missed yeah, so we might want to, if we can add that back into the rolling open business, um, for whatever reason, we didn't get the fiduciary coverage again. We've talked to three or four mm -hmm. different people. I have no idea what the issue is, so it's on my list of things to do next week. I'm going to actually just call and get to who I need to talk to, explain exactly what it is that we need. I, and I guess I'll ask, too, if that... Um, claim that Sharon Winteroud uh, mm, yes. filed. I don't know if that it, they're just maybe ignoring us. They don't want to give us fiduciary right. coverage because she made that claim. I don't know. Um, but it's on my list to take care of next so, week to find well, out what's going on. When I talked to the lady, we had two different policies. We had the one policy that covered most everything, and then we had the fiduciary one. There's two separate policies is what she told me. And we were covered. It's we had the other one, or we got it. That's we got. That's what she said. We had it. When I called, I specifically said we need to get this, and she's, oh no, you have a policy for that. That's what she said. Um, I think we I saw received, the insurance. That we did. We received the what is it? The binder. Yeah, it wasn't. On and the it, it it specifically that. listed out fiduciary coverage and a. Well, maybe that doesn't renew on the same date. I don't know. Well, the other the, thing yeah, about it is that unless we added it. It didn't get taken care of because Sharon Winterrod's claim was denied because they didn't have that coverage. So I, I honestly don't think we have the coverage. Okay. There's definitely a disconnect uh, mm -hmm. too, and I agree with what you're saying. I mean, it's just, yeah. and I've had, I had when I was trying to work on it, I, I just could not make traction talking to them. And I don't know what What's your experience is, but you call and you get What's the that? voice. What was her claim? She filed a claim um, to try to cover the missing funds. Because oh, she was the president of the board then. Oh. And then she must not have realized that they didn't have coverage for that. That might have, yeah, that may have been acceptable and it would have worked. They would have mm -hmm. had coverage except the former board didn't like that. Important and, coverage. and we want to make sure that we have it. Even though we've put all these yeah. controls in place, you just never know. Yeah, mm -hmm. We could take care of that $144. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's not worth it. No. <laughs> I've learned that on the house. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, and do you well, know if it's, I mean, we might be, I know certain types of insurance you can add any time, but I don't know about that one. If it's a physical year, you get it then or else you don't get I it don't next know. year. I okay. Don't. I'll well, good luck. Try to find out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and if you want to ask him to help out with that, Nicole, feel free to just call him and ask. He'll be bored. I just feel like it's gotten okay. to the point where I need to sit down on the phone until I get the answer I that I need. <laughs> and speaking of insurance, it looks like our insurance is going to pay the claim for the car accident mm -hmm. that, that Brandy was in. So they determined that Although there was enough evidence that she did hit him, but it's completely likely that she did not know it. It was a large van. That yeah, she said that she saw the pictures and everything, and it looks like the tire hit, like, rubbed across his bumper. Oh, yeah. um, so, and she said based on everything that everybody told her, she thinks that that's probably what happened, that she did make contact, but probably didn't even realize it. Brandy um, in the shelter van, she was at, 
was it a pet smart or something? Yeah. And was backing out, and apparently the tire rubbed against a guy's Cadillac, and she didn't know anything was wrong. She was driving away, and he came and waved her down, and um, he and whoever he was eating with took pictures and whatnot, and sent in the claim. Where the sticky thing was is that when Brandy filled out her form, she said, "I don't think I hit him." So it became a contested claim, and this guy was kind of. Actually. Well, he never went through his insurance company either. Yeah, he went straight yeah. to our insurance company. So, yeah, they determined that it probably likely did happen. And it's um, they've seen things like that with the larger vehicles that sometimes that happens, and yeah, you don't know. <coughs> so, Who's they paid the claim, and we don't have to do anything else. Can't see. Yeah, it was about $2,500 a day. Yeah, wow. that is what shocked okay. me. That's what the insurance is for. So. Yep. 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 And with that, with that Sloan, the Sloan, so Sloan drives her own car. That's mm -hmm. why she's getting the mileage rate for Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. New business, Steve. Yeah, I got an email from Mike Worthman this morning, actually, who mm -hmm. said, "Hey, a little bit of history for you. In eight days, um, eight days from today, what is the date of the 20 years ago you guys first signed a lease in the building?" <laughs> Oh, so wow. you've been in the Pine Junction building for 20 years. <laughs> wow. and so, while you had him on the phone, did you ask about the month? He was. He, he emailed me, and I did ask him about <laughs> okay. the month. The month. I re replied back and said, you know, I looked at it, and it's not there. And we need to get that. What can you do for me? Okay. So yes, I took the opportunity. It's a cool bit of information. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool information. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we kind of at different times kicked around doing a volunteer appreciation function of some sort and seeing the ranch uh, bar and grill kind of brought it up in my head again. Um, they said they could do uh, pizza bars and taco bars and <coughs> things like that. And I didn't ask about the cost, I just kind of wanted us to start talking about if, if we want to look into doing something like that. Um, just having a, an evening where we invite, you know, all the volunteers to come out and, um, you know, obviously I think the shelter would pay for the food and then leave it up to people if, if they're going to buy alcohol, you know, they should buy that themselves. Um, but if that sounds like something we're all interested in, I could talk to Cindy and get an idea of cost. I, yeah, I'd like to throw business her way if we can. Mm -hmm. That was the other thing, because she's doing a great thing for us. That would be a good PR thing. Mm -hmm. That would be great for the volunteers to do so much for us. Could, could yeah. we do something yeah. like in conjunction with the Christmas party, sort of? Like a, a holiday volunteer appreciation kind of thing? The silent auction. Like That'll give us a couple months after the silent auction to get everything in place. Okay. Maybe we have Santa Claus for pictures with them. I'm, I'm sure. Santa Claus? I will go ahead and volunteer <laughs> Scott to dress as Santa Claus. You can be an elf. He has his own Number Santa one elf. Suit. He has his own Santa suit, so obviously it's something he enjoys doing. And we have a Mrs. Claus suit, too. I'm not sure who has it, but <coughs> there is one. There is one? Yeah. Like the shelter has one? Access to one. So you're volunteering for that, then? For that party, I will. Not for the Christmas in July. <laughs> All right, I'll get information on that and forward that. Okay. Any more new business? I just wanted to bring up the Christmas in July because I had promised I was going to work the whole event and I can't because of, I'm going to be out the next two weeks down in Georgia, just um, family health issues. So there's no choice. I've got to go down there. Um, so I'm not going to make it. I'm, I've got uh, Bob, Neptune Chimney guy, Bob. Um, Belfort. 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 He's going to actually go and work part, if not all of it, so I feel better about that. Um, he talked to me today about it, but um, I wasn't sure if anybody else here was going to be able to you know, help out with that. I don't know if they need more help, but I just wanted to kind of let you guys know that I was hoping to represent the board and go and help. Maybe and I are going to be there to help set up the day before, good. and we're going to work that day. Okay, good, great. And I'm trying to get my husband to commit to, he'll probably do teardown versus building it up, but I think maybe Bob can set things up Saturday morning and then maybe I can get my husband down there to 
help you know take things apart. That'll help. And I'll do afternoon help too. If okay. They, like cashier and tear down. Yeah, I think they've got one person as cashier, but I know last year we ended up needing two people. Okay. So that would be great too. So just FYI, just even if it's just a short. Mm -hmm. Not the whole, because I think they are going to start Thursday and Friday. Maybe it's just Friday now. I'm setting up to put a room downstairs. Oh, wow. What they're going to do. But that, I think that's pretty much just a few people they need. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, I just, I guess I'll throw out one thing is um, uh, Wendy and I and often Deb generally go to the thrift store meeting, which is on the Saturday following the board meeting. And I just wanted to, I don't know how many people knew that that actually happened. But anybody else who wants to go is more than welcome to. I think they appreciate the fact that board members show up and mm -hmm. um, they go in and kiss up to them a little bit and thank them for all they do. And they cook breakfast. So. They oh, yeah, they, they do. They have breakfast. Oh, so. yeah. But They're I just didn't friendly. know if everybody knew we did that because it's kind of, it, it sort of started last year and Kathy just sort of emails me. I don't know if anybody else knew about it even. Kathy's playing new best foot now. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. But it's 9 a.m. Kenny. Kenny G. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then you get to shop too. But yeah, I can certainly try. It's nice up there. Yeah, it is. I can't make it this week, but you remind me next time. Further in advance? Yeah. So let's see, it'll be the Saturday morning after the meeting. <laughs> All right. Nothing else? Not for this one. All right, we'll call this meeting to a close at 7.57. Thank you. Seven.